Hi there, welcome to the Upcycle Design Lab. If you're new here, my name's Cindy and I craft using recycled and repurposed materials to give you ideas on ways to make and create more economically and ecologically. If you've seen my last few videos, you know I've been working on quite a few different garden projects. And today I have another one for you. So let's get started making an upcycled solar light chandelier. The first thing you need is a large can, and I'm just using an old coffee can, but any large can will probably work if you like the shape of it. And the first thing you need to do is just to remove the label. I was fortunate enough to be able to remove the label all in one piece. This can had been sitting in my garage for a little while, so you can see that it's gotten a little bit rusty, but that's not a problem. I'm going to be cleaning it up and painting it. And then once I have my label off my can, I'm going to fill it with water put the lid back on and stick it in the freezer overnight. Next, I wanted to make a template for my can. And since I was able to get the label off all in one piece, I was able to use that for my template. But if you aren't able to do that, all you need to do is take a couple of measurements, the circumference of the can and then also the height of the can, and then you can draw a rectangle based on those measurements for your template. Once you have your rectangular shape, you can go ahead and sketch on any design that you want to. I just used sort of a diamond pattern, and you do want to be able to leave a you do want to leave a little bit of gap at the top and the bottom. I left about a half of an inch. And also you want to leave a space for your label to overlap. And then you can draw pretty much any design that you want inside those lines. And once the design is created, then you need to go back and put in your drill marks. So that's what the dots are all along my pattern. So here I'm just using a little bit of scotch tape to attach the template to the can once the water is frozen. And once the template is in place, this is a really important step because when the can warms up, the ice starts melting and your template will get soaking wet and you won't be able to use it. So I decided to cover the whole can template with some packing tape. And that did allow me to get all the way through the process of punching and drilling the holes without tearing the template too badly. So I'm working on a towel here because the ice will start to melt almost immediately and the can gets pretty slippery and you definitely want something to soak up some of the water. The other thing I'm doing is I'm using a center punch to mark about five or eight holes at a time. And then I'm going ahead with my cordless drill to drill the holes that I've punched. As I was working on this, it does get pretty tiring. And about, you know, halfway through, I started wondering if I really needed the ice in there because it makes it harder to drill. But there were a couple of spots at the top of the can where the ice wasn't quite all the way to the top. And I did end up denting the can a little bit. So I do think the ice is a very necessary step but the other thing is that I was only able to do about a quarter of the design at a time. And then I actually needed a rest anyway, and I wanted the ice to refreeze. So after drilling about a quarter of the project, I put it back in the freezer for about a half an hour and then continued working on the design a little bit at a time and refreezing it as necessary. So as I'm taking the label off, you can kind of see how flimsy it got even with the packing tape on there. And then uh, I melted the ice, cleaned up the can a little bit. All the rust didn't come off, but most of it did. And you can see here some of the dents at the top of the can. They're not too bad, but once again, the, I do think the ice is actually necessary, even if you're using a heavier weight can. I've been using Krylon Fusion All-in-One Copper Metallic Spray Paint for a lot of my projects. So I'm continuing using that color on my tin can chandelier here. And I ended up putting two coats on to achieve the coverage that I was looking for. To make the handle, I found a long piece of copper wire in my stash, so I'm not sure what the gauge is, but it's a fairly heavy gauge. It's pliable but sturdy. And I'm just using a large screwdriver to wrap the copper wire around and then unwind it to make my little hanger. These are the solar lights that I'm going to be using. I found them at Harbor Freight for less than $10. And I have quite a few of these strings in my yard already, but they're cute little dragonfly shape and they come in a string of 10 solar lights. In addition to my design, I've also drilled a couple of holes in the top of the can 
two holes to attach my handle and then I decided to put one of the dragonflies on top of the can so I drilled a couple of extra holes to attach the dragonfly to the top. I'm going to be using some lightweight florist wire to wire the whole thing together so I'm just cutting a short piece to attach the first to dragonfly. And this part gets a little messy and hard to see but basically I'm just using the wire to attach the cord and the dragonfly to the can and then I'm inserting all of the dragonflies inside the can and adding some extra wire to hold the dragonflies inside the can. The last step was to use some needle nose pliers to attach my handle. Now at this point I thought I was done. I thought it was pretty cute but when the lights actually came on I was kind of disappointed. I thought more light would come out of the bottom of the can. So as an afterthought I decided to pull out a few of the dragonflies and let them hang out the bottom and I do think it makes it look a little bit more like a chandelier than a lantern. So you can let me know which version you like better in the comments. Thank you for stopping by. I hope to see you back here soon in the lab. And if you haven't already, I hope you'll consider subscribing so you don't miss out on the next experiment.